Hey guys, it's Tia. So my background is different because I am currently back home with all of the COVID-19 stuff. All of Davis's classes have moved online for spring quarter, so I'm not gonna be in Davis for next quarter. I'm just gonna be home. I'm very lucky that I have the privilege to stay home. If you also have that privilege, I would very highly advise you to stay home as well and prevent the spread of the virus by not going out and socializing with people. I will link some resources in my bio all about the CDC's guidelines on staying safe and current updates so that you guys can stay informed. But today I'm going to be doing a college Q&A because I know a lot of the freshmen just recently got admitted. So congratulations to all the freshmen who got admitted to UC Davis. I'm here to answer questions. I posted something on my Instagram story a little while ago asking for you guys to send me questions and that's what I'm going to be doing today. Real quick before I get on into the video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to a freshman at Davis who is also a small business owner. Her name is Viv and she owns her own jewelry store. I will put all of her information in my description box below. She wants to inspire others to find passions that they really enjoy as a way to also cope with college transitions and big life stresses. I think that's super important and a really good message. I think it's important for a lot of people to have something that they are passionate about and stick to it because a lot of times that can help in times of big change like going to college or just transitioning and having a big life transition. Currently, she's selling necklaces for $10, earrings for around $10, but the prices vary, and keychains for $8. I will leave her Instagram handle right here and like I said before I will leave all of her information in the description box below so if you're interested and want to buy some of her stuff make sure to go reach out and now back into the video all right let's just get into these questions okay so the first question I got into UC Davis and I'm really excited about it yeah I'm excited for you congratulations would you happen to know any on-campus opportunities I mean, that could mean a lot of things like clubs, organizations, jobs, internships. I'm not super well versed in the world of clubs and organizations, but I do know a lot about jobs and internships since I work at the Internship and Career Center. There are a lot of on-campus opportunities for work. A lot of students engage in research with their professors or TAs. There's plenty of different internship programs throughout the campus. I'm involved with the Arboretum program, uh, which is the Learning by Leading program put on by Arboretum and Public Gardens at Davis. So the best place to look for on-campus opportunities would be through hand Handshake. Handshake is a job searching tool that Davis is a part of and so you actually already have a Handshake account once you become an admitted student. Once you get your UC Davis email, I believe you can access your Handshake account. Don't quote me on that. I think that's how it works. I think once you get your email, you can unlock your Handshake account. You can filter through Handshake for specifically on-campus jobs or internships and those will be the only things that pop up when you look. A good way to look for on-campus opportunities too is also to look at your major's listserv and actually look through those emails and see what kind of opportunities they have. My major is environmental policy analysis and planning and I absolutely love the emails that they send us with the different opportunities. Some of them don't really apply to me but a lot of them do and it's really cool to see a bunch of different companies that I'm interested in, organizations, on-campus things that I would want to do and that I probably wouldn't have heard of otherwise if I didn't get that email. Okay, second question, what's your favorite part about Davis? I would say I really love the emphasis on sustainability and environmental stewardship. It's really cool to live in a town that really puts a lot of effort forward to focus on sustainable efforts. People are really sweet and really kind as well, and I really like how even if I don't know somebody or they're just like a stranger in town, people are really polite and really kind. I also love the cows. I mean, if you're not a cow person, I guess that's okay, but I freaking love them. <laughs> it's really cool that we have a lot of different animals on campus. I actually took animal science last quarter and oh my God, <laughs> it was so amazing. The horses here, so much fun. So I love that we have so many cool animals on campus. Okay, so the next question is, what are the worst things about UC Davis? Okay. Some of the worst things, I would say we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, so there's not a whole lot to do within Davis as a town itself. We do have a downtown, but it's kind of just basic. I don't know, like there's there's a lot of boba shops and there's a lot of places to eat, but there's not a whole lot of like activity, I would say. We are close to like Sacramento and kind of close to San Francisco. And so there are things you can do and ways to mitigate that. But if you don't have a car or you don't wanna travel that far out from Davis as a town, there's not a whole lot to do within the town itself. Also, just personally, quarter system is really difficult and there's pros and cons to semester system versus quarter. And so either way, it just kind of depends on what works best for you. But quarter system is very, very intense because it moves so quickly that sometimes I feel like I'm not retaining or learning as much information as I 
I can. I think quarter system works for some classes, but not others. I just feel like with math and chemistry classes and a lot of the science-based classes, quarter system can be super brutal. I'm trying to think if there's anything else like super awful about Davis. Sometimes the weather. Um, this winter quarter was very weird. Um, <laughs> climate change, but uh, yeah, it was not as rainy as it usually is. Like usually it is really rainy and winter quarter is very uh, depressing. Um, it's just not a fun quarter usually. And the summers in Davis get really, 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 really hot. So I don't really like the extreme temperature changes. We don't really have like stable weather. Uh, it's pretty much just nice in the fall and the spring usually. Okay, so the next question is how do I make friends in college? I think a great thing to do is try to find people of similar interests with you. Try to connect with people in your classes if possible. Try to engage in clubs and organizations or if you are working somewhere to try to get to know your coworkers a little bit. Essentially expanding your network. So being involved with different things and working with different groups of people is definitely gonna help to expand your network. So if you kind of have like the same routine every single day, it's gonna be hard for you to like meet new people and to network with new people. That being said, it can be really tough if you're introverted to like have a lot of social activity. So I would say trying to connect with the people that you do see every day. If you see the same people a lot, you know, reaching out and introducing yourself and exchanging social media is a great way to expand your network. You are gonna have to put yourself out there if you do wanna expand your network. And so it's di very different for everybody how they do that and how comfortable they are with that. But if you're able to find at least a couple people that you really like and, and you can spend time with, that's I think the most important thing. Another thing too that I wanna mention is in terms of finding friends and building networks and getting close to other people, it's really important that if you want those things to happen, you need to put effort into your friendships. It can be tough in college, especially after you move out of the dorms and you move off campus to continue with friendships and relationships because it takes work. You know, you have to go out to see people and you have to figure out times to meet. You know, on campus in the dorms, it's really easy because everybody just lives next to each other. And so it's easy to get together, um, go to the DC together and things like that. So definitely if you are in the dorms to utilize those things as much as possible But when you do go off campus realize that you're gonna have to put in more effort into your relationships and friendships in order to keep them going Okay, the next question is how do I find a suitable roommate for freshman year? I know for me when I was looking for a roommate freshman year I used Facebook to look for roommates and they had their own like program through Facebook I don't remember what it's called if I remember it, I'll leave it in the description below or I'll pop it up on the screen But basically Facebook had this application where I could write things about myself and you know rate different things that I find important in a roommate and then they would try to use the my answers to like match me up with people on Facebook and so I remember meeting a lot of people through that and messaging people through that but a lot of people also just have like random roommates I know for my third roommate it was like a random situation and so sometimes that's just the way that it goes but that's the way that I did it I don't know what the system is now for finding roommates I don't know if it's different I don't know if Facebook still offers that application or not but a good way is always Facebook because once they open up that freshman Facebook page, I would highly recommend posting a little bit about yourself and reaching out to people who also post on there because that's a good way to meet people. Okay, so the next question is from Ruby. Hey Ruby! She asks, how do you think Zoom University will be? So if you don't know, Davis is moving all of the spring quarter classes online and we're gonna be using Zoom to go to lecture and interact with our professors. I think <laughs> that it will be interesting because the professors don't have a lot of time to figure out the changes in their lesson plan because basically I'm right now currently on spring break but then next week we start classes so it's definitely going to be a scramble for sure I don't know how these labs are going to go because I'm taking biz 2b so <laughs> I don't know what that's going to look like but I'm hoping that it is, I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be okay. I just feel like we're gonna run into a lot of road bumps and it's gonna be hard to navigate those because we only have 10 weeks. I feel like the professors are gonna be a little bit more lenient about things because they're learning too. And so it's sort of just on both ends, I think we're gonna be learning together. That was a really dumb answer. I'm trying to think if I can make this sound better. <laughs> I'm nervous that I'm not gonna be super motivated to work on stuff because I'm home. So I'm a little bit nervous on my level of productivity. It's 
also gonna be sort of difficult because a big part of going to class and going to lecture and whatever is like making new friends and making study groups and things like that. So it will be kind of tough to do that. Hopefully people still reach out through Zoom or through social media to create study groups together. I'm lucky that I have friends who are taking similar classes as me, so I will at least know some people already in the class, but it's still tough being remote and being far away. So hopefully we're able to like bridge that gap and like overcome that. The next question is, how is the UC Davis lifestyle? It's a lot of biking. <laughs> I actually really like it. I think at certain times of the quarter, it's definitely more intense and people are really focused and trying to get their work done, especially if they're in really difficult majors or if they're double majoring and working or doing other things at the same time. But at, at the end of the day, everyone is pretty chill and it's a nice environment to be around like campus when it's really pretty during the springtime and fall unfortunately we cannot appreciate that with this quarantine but usually during the springtime it's just so beautiful and really gorgeous out and it's really nice and i think people's moods kind of tend to lift up after winter quarter because it's not as cold and sad and rainy and the lifestyle is really nice. I really like Davis a lot as a town. Um, it's, a, it's a good place because there's a lot of opportunity to stay focused on things and you're surrounded by so many people that are really focused on academics and want to do really well. And so it's really cool to meet other people who are interested in, you know, finding jobs after graduation and networking and all those kinds of things. So I, I really like the lifestyle a lot. It's a good balance between relaxing and hanging out and also focusing on academics. So the next question is, how do you get an internship or job? So as a student outreach assistant at the Internship and Career Center, this is exactly what I do for a living as I tell people how to find internships and jobs. <laughs> the best way that we would recommend for finding internships and jobs is to use Handshake. There's a couple of other different places you can look as well. LinkedIn is really great. I would really highly recommend students to build their LinkedIn profile and really use it because it's a great networking tool and a good opportunity to look for positions. University Enterprises is another great place to look for jobs. You Davis works with university enterprises and so Davis students are allowed to look for jobs on there so I'd highly recommend taking advantage of that opportunity. So before all of the quarantining I would recommend students to come visit us at the ICC but because of all the quarantine everything is moved online so if you do want to see our advisors and talk to our advisors you can do that through phone appointment or video appointment and we will be posting a lot of our materials online and on our website in different formats. The ICC website is icc.ucdavis.eu. I will link it in my description. So be sure to check that out because there's a ton of different resources for jobs and internships there. But like a huge way to find internships and jobs is networking. If your social network is bigger and you know more people, it's going to be easier for you to find different opportunities, hear about different opportunities, and potentially get those opportunities based on the people that you know and the people that you work with. So those are some of my tips. Like I said, the ICC website will probably be the best place for finding the most up-to-date and most credible resources in terms of finding jobs and internships. All right, so the next question is overall experience at Davis and thoughts on students getting sent home. So overall experience at Davis has been really positive for me so far. In terms of students getting sent home, there was so much commotion with that. Like so many Davis students were frustrated with the administration for not giving us information fast enough, which I agree to, to a certain extent, but it's also like a lot of Davis students were comparing our administration to like Berkeley's administration or other colleges just because they heard back faster doesn't mean that the protocol was any better or any worse than ours I think our administration was just trying to take time to figure out what the best steps were as opposed to like immediately making a decision and causing a disruption like I heard that Harvard kicked their students out of the dorms and only gave them five days to find another place to go which is just not practical and to me that doesn't make sense basically the administration came back and told us that finals were going to be online. I didn't like how slow that was because we were really approaching finals week and a lot of us were confused and the fact that that information was kind of scattered. It was like on the website before it got emailed to us and so it was just sort of a big mess but I totally agreed with their decision to send students home and give students the option to move out of the dorms and refund them. I'm hoping that within the dorms too if more people leave that we can sort of spread students out in different dorms so that way we're not having like three or four people living in the same dorm and like potentially getting each other sick but yeah i agree i think students should be home if possible and if it makes sense or at least if they're in their apartments to stay in their apartments and not to go out as much as possible the next question is from garb hello he asks with how demanding college is how do you effectively relax slash recharge 
Big fan, by the way. Well, that is an honor because <laughs> I am a huge, huge fan of yours. You already know that. I'm obsessed with you. So thank you for sending in a question. And it's a really good question. So how do you like relax and recharge? I think a lot of times this is something that a lot of students struggle with. And it's something that you don't really think about. I think when you come into college, you, you're more focused on your academics and making friends and you know doing things that you kind of forget about the flip side of like, okay, so once I'm done with my stuff, how do I relax? And like, how do I recharge my battery so that next quarter, you know, I can come back even stronger. I think it's important to really understand yourself and understand where your limits are with things. I know for me before in high school, I would often overextend myself into tasks because it was easy in the moment to just say like, oh yeah, I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. And then getting home and looking at my, you know, basically like opening my list of things to do and it like hits the floor. And so it's just not realistic, but I definitely understand that mentality of like being a people pleaser and like wanting to say yes to everything. So it's just important to understand and what are you capable of and what does your mental health capacity look like because it's going to be different for everybody. I personally love watching K-dramas and anime so that's pretty much how I relax and recharge. Catching up on Netflix shows, FaceTiming my friends. I really like painting so if I have access to a canvas and paints I probably would do some painting or drawing. All right the next question is where are you from? So I'm from Sacramento, I've been born and raised here and so that was a big reason also why I chose Davis was because it was pretty close to home. I have a pretty good relationship with my parents. It is nice to be closer to home especially in events like this with with the quarantine it's really nice that i'm super close to home and the the move wasn't that drastic next question do you have the time to take elective classes as a freshman or do you have to wait until later so everybody's journey with electives is different i know a lot of people who did them early on and knocked them out early on and then i know some people that kind of waited to the last minute but there are pros and cons to doing it either way there is a lot of room in freshman schedules to take electives i just finished winter quarter of my second year and i'm done with all my ge's this quarter that's just because i had slowly been working ge's into my schedule it's really nice as a freshman too because as you're getting adjusted to college life and living on campus if that's what you're doing and just generally like adjusting to the new academic rigor of a uh, uc it's really nice to take electives alongside major classes so that you kind of have one a buffer for your GPA which is something I really needed and also just it's cool to expand and see what things interest you outside of what you originally thought was going to interest you like I know some of the GEs that I took really gave me direction on some things that I'm interested in and had I not taken those GEs I probably wouldn't have ever known that I'd be interested in certain topics typically at Davis you'll find a lot of freshmen taking elective classes though so that is what I would consider, I guess, the norm or like what most people do. Next question, did you immediately like Davis? If not, when did it start feeling like home? So did I immediately like Davis? It really didn't feel like home for a while because of living on campus and kind of still adjusting to new things. Towards the end of winter quarter into spring quarter of my freshman year, I started to feel more comfortable and more happy I guess at Davis. I think fall quarter was really difficult because there was a lot of new obstacles and new struggles and having to deal with it all in one time period was very stressful. Next question is what are the differences between living on campus versus off campus? So one of the major differences is that when you're living on campus you don't really have to worry too much about getting the class on time because all your classes are right there so there's definitely less stress and pressure about getting the class on time. It's also a lot easier to meet new people because you're surrounded by a lot of freshmen in your area. There isn't the stress of cooking or grocery shopping. There is some of that, like some people do still want to cook and eventually you do have to go to the grocery store to like stock up on stuff. But in terms of your basic necessities, you have most of them available to you. So there isn't a ton of that versus off campus where you really have to work on cooking, going to the grocery store, cleaning and all those other things. Like it's definitely a very different experience than living on campus. Also the struggle of getting to school and figuring out if you do have a car, figuring out the permit situation, if you want a bike, depending on how far your apartment is, if that's feasible or not, what kind of bus routes you have available to you and things like that. I think something that is similar though is you do need to have good communication with the people that you live with both in the dorms and off campus. I think it's really important that you are able to communicate whatever you feel like is going on in your place of living. And I think with the dorms it's easier because you do have like RAs that can help to sort of mediate any conflict should there be any. And also I know for my RA she basically had us kind of fill out like a roommate agreement basically and all the different dorms had to fill those out. 
but if you move off campus that may not be the case you may not have like a roommate agreement so i'd highly recommend doing monthly check-ins with your roommates or things like that just making sure that there's good communication i have a whole video about how i found my apartment and the steps that i took to find my place so if you're interested in that i will link that below and also have a little card pop up on the screen Okay, so the next question asks, I'm trying to decide between UC Davis and UC Santa Cruz, what made you choose Davis? My major was environmental policy and I knew that Davis was very heavily focused on environmental studies and sustainability and so I knew that Davis was a strong choice for me because of so much emphasis and research and money and opportunities surrounding environmental stuff at Davis. It's just like our bread and butter basically. I think it's really important that you look at what each of the colleges focuses the most on because of course every college is gonna be like, oh, we do everything and we have opportunities for everyone. That's true, but like obviously some schools are gonna be more focused on certain things just due to the nature of the geography of the campus and what the climate and environment is like there. Next question is how easy is it to switch majors at UC Davis? So I haven't had to switch majors yet, but I know people who have. I would highly recommend going to check out both Him Shimama and Alex Fisher Wagner's videos about changing majors. They made amazing videos about their experience with changing majors and advice that they would give to students. So I'd highly recommend to go check those out. I will leave their information down in my description box and a link to their changing majors videos. All right, so the next question is how present is Greek life? I'm not super involved with Greek life, but it's definitely not something that's like an overwhelming presence at Davis. I know some schools, it's like if you're not in Greek life, you are you know, not involved with anything at all. And that's not really what it's like at Davis. I mean, we definitely have Greek life activity at Davis. It's just not super overwhelmingly pressured onto students. If students want to be involved with that, they can. And if they don't, there's not like this weird social like distancing or like <laughs> social distancing. <laughs> oh my God. There's not this weird hierarchy or anything like that at our school, or you're not considered lame if you're not a part of Greek life or anything like that. If you're interested in it, be sure to check it out. I'm just not the expert in that, so I can't really speak to that, but as someone who isn't in Greek life, I don't feel like marginalized in any way. <laughs> Next question is asking about freshman orientation. Can you tell us step-by-step step how the process went for freshman orientation at Davis? It's gonna be different this year because I think orientation is probably gonna be online with the coronavirus stuff. I think even before the coronavirus stuff, they were we're gonna switch things up for orientation. They were gonna like switch out the format of it. Essentially orientation for me, it was a two day process. I think the new thing that they're gonna switch it to is like a week or something, or it's gonna be longer. So for me, it was two days. I came onto campus. We like basically watched a bunch of seminars and learned a lot about the different services at Davis and then stayed the night at Davis in the dorms. And then the next morning basically did the same thing, but we had a little bit more freedom to choose which lectures and things that we wanted to go do and, and see, which I really liked. And then at the very end, we made our schedules and worked with our advisors to make sure that we could get the schedule that we wanted. So I don't know how it's gonna be the new orientation. I would say make sure to check the UC Davis website and see if they have information about orientation yet. I'm not sure, uh, but I, I know that it's gonna be different. Next question is tips on feeling homesick and missing pets from home. I very much relate to that, even though I'm super close. I had a lot of stuff to do on campus and a lot of things to get done. So I tried to limit how often I went home. So if you can have someone, you know, FaceTime your pets, <laughs> you know, and like hold the camera up to your pets, that's always great. Um, if people can take pictures and send them to you, that always brightens up my day. In terms of feeling homesick, if you have a good support system and if you have good friends at Davis, you know, they can sort of take your mind off of things by going and hanging out and spending time with you I think that can definitely help a lot it does tend to like wear off after a little bit definitely the first you know couple weeks that you're there you're definitely gonna be more homesick because everything is just new and it's a lot of change all at once and so if you're able to find people the kind of people that you spend time with and you like don't even realize like so much time had passed like oh my god I've been hanging out with you for like six hours and, like it felt like 30 minutes you know like things like that and then the last question is how do I get an on-campus job so a lot of students ask me in my position at work this question a lot if you're really interested one thing to note is find out if you're work study eligible because that definitely opens up opportunities for you because some employers on campus are looking for only work study eligible students. If you are work study eligible, make sure that you make that very clear on your resume and in the interview process. But just some more general tips for finding on campus jobs using Handshake to find on campus jobs. If you can go to Handshake and filter your job search by 
at on campus, it makes it a lot easier to see what's available. Also reaching out to your professors and TAs about different opportunities because I know a lot of my friends have worked with professors or TAs with research or internship opportunities. And like I said before, make sure to check that listserv that your major advisors will send out. It's a great way to look through the different opportunities and a great resource as well is the Internship and Career Center. That's not biased, I know that I work there, but it's a great resource for students. And if you talk to our advisors about being interested in on-campus work, they can definitely point you in the right direction. <sighs> okay, I'm finally done with answering all the questions. I'm very sleepy, very tired. My voice is <laughs> kind of dying a little bit. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. I really, really appreciate it. I'm glad that you guys are really excited. I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting on my YouTube channel recently. Thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. That's crazy. Like, I can't even believe that. I really appreciate it. It's really cool that I've been able to put out some more collabs recently and people have been really enjoying those because those are some of my most famous favorite videos to film. I absolutely love the, my friends that make videos too and so hopefully I'll be able to film with more people in the future. Probably not the foreseeable future just because of all this social distancing that we have to do in quarantine. But I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. Like I said before, I will link information from the CDC in my description box. So if you're interested on staying updated, make sure to go check that out. And congratulations to all the newly admitted freshmen. I am very excited and happy for you. Like I said before, if you have any more questions for me, make sure to DM me on Instagram or leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. That's pretty much it. For me if you really like this video make sure to give it a like don't forget to subscribe on your way out and i will catch you guys next time bye